Om Ajnana Timarandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Chaksurun Militanyena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Recording in progress Nama Om Vishnu Padaya Krishna Prishtaya Bhutale Srimati Bhaktivedanta Swaminiti Namine Namaste Sarasati Devi Koravani Precharine Nirvishesha Shunyavari Paschachadesha Tarine Vanchakaupa Tarubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Bhayevacha Patitanam Pavan Ebyo Vaishnavibyo Namo Namaha <coughs> Jai Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda, Shri Advaita Gadadhar, Shri Vasati Gaur Bhaktavinda. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. So welcome all the devotees to our study of Nectar of Devotion at the level of Bhakti Shastri. Right? So, I'll sh did, did you all get the material we sent yesterday? Did you get the PDF file for the lesson two? No. Oh, no. Oh. Oh. Uh, we answered in the group. But, uh, but we didn't receive. Oh. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you got it? No. No. I want to get it. Well, I sent it to him last night. He didn't send it to you? No. Oh. Can you send to Sudarshan? Sudarshan Pabu? Can you? Uh, next time. Do you have it on WhatsApp? No. Maybe you can send it here in the chat and then you, you can... Oh, can you send You talk to Annie Ruda. You talk to Annie Ruda. Annie Ruda, I sent to Annie Ruda. Why he didn't send it to you? I think he, maybe he is sick. He no, is no, 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 no. He's not, so, not that sick. He's getting better. He is busy. Or oh, can you send to me? I can send to all the classmates. Well, how do I send it to you? Email? Yes, Maharaj, you can email me. I'm WhatsApping my email address to you. Anyway, I'm not going to do it now. You're going to have to just watch the class and I'll send it to you after the class. Okay. All right. Am I a host? Yeah? Yes, 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 Maharaj. Okay. So I'll send you all this, this stuff after. Uh, I don't have the list. If you give me the list of all the devotees, then I can send it to everybody. But nobody gave me all the list. I have to send to somebody else. I sent it last night to Annie Rood. He asked me, he said, where, where? He said, they're asking for the material. So I sent him all the material. He was supposed to send it to you. Okay. So that's you, can, you can send it to me, Maharaj, and I, I will uh, give it on the WhatsApp. I'll share it on WhatsApp with everyone. Okay, so you put your email on my WhatsApp. Yes, yes, I've done, already done. Okay, so I'll do that. All right, so here's lesson two. We're going to talk about pure devotional service, definition of pure devotional service. Now, this is something he put in, by the way, this is this is nothing to do with the class, but this is just something for you might be interested in. 
You know, this is Mahatma Prabhu's Japa, uh, Japa program, right? It says, I chant to please Radha and Krishna, not to gain anything material. It is said that if we chant the holy name to receive something material or with the intention of making material progress, it is an offence to the holy name. The very mood, the very essence, the very meaning creation carries is, I want pure devotional service. This is with focus and attention. Controlling our mind really means controlling our attention. If we consider japa to be essentially important to our spiritual life, then it's going to be much easier to chant with attention, since we naturally give attention to what is most important in our life. With this affirmation, we confirm that it is possible to be attentive and that we will control our attention while chanting. So this is Mahatma Prabhu's uh, realization about chanting the holy name. He's saying we should understand it's very important. If we think it's very important, then we will concentrate more and try to do it. Okay, here's a quote from Prabhupada. Who would like to read for us? Anybody like to read? The, who didn't read? Mataji, would you like to read for us? What's Mataji's name? Krishna Prabhu. Yes. Go ahead, read. Can I read Maharaj? Yeah, please. Importance of Bhakti Shastri. I think you may have already heard that in January of 1970, we will be holding an examination among all our students on this book and those who will pass shall be awarded with the title of Bhakti Shastri. With these examinations, I wish to encourage all my disciples to very carefully learn this philosophy of Krishna consciousness because there are so many preachers required to bring this message to all the corners of the earth. Letter to Mahapurusha, Los Angeles, 7th February 1969. Hare Krishna. So you see, way back in the beginning of our movement, Prabhupada had this Bhakti Shastri course. Of course, in those days, there was no course. The devotees would just study on their own. And they'd come and Prabhupada would give exam. But now we organize the course. Can you keep reading, Maharaji? Yes, Maharaj. Rishabha Uvacha. Nayam Dehu. Uh, deha bhujam raloke kashtan kaman arhate vid bhujim, bhujum ye tapo divyam putraka yena sattvam shudhye yasmad brahma saukhyam tvanantam. Lord Rishabhadev told his sons, My dear boys, of all the living entities who have accepted material bodies in this world, one who has been awarded this human form should not work hard day and night simply for sense gratification, which is available even for dogs and hogs that eat stool. One should engage in penance and austerity to attain the divine position of devotional service. By such activity, one's heart is purified and when one attains this position, he attains eternal blissful life, which is transcendental to material happiness and which continues forever. Srimad Bhagavatam 5.5.1 Thank you. Yes, that's a favourite verse of Srila Prabhupada. Prabhupada liked to lecture on that verse. Lord Rishabhdev telling his sons that life is not meant for sense gratification. Okay, now here's some revision. Keep reading, Maharaj Ji. Listen, one revision. Please explain the importance of Srila Rupa Goswami. All right, who would like to say, tell me something about Srila Rupa Goswami? Anything? What did he do? Can I start? Uh, yes. Can I start, Maharaj? Please do. Yes. Rupa Goswami, yeah, Rupa Goswami uh, was empowered by Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to, um, uh, 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 first of all, to 
bring out the aspect of what was written in the scriptures and he would uh, also to bring out uh, the lost uh, Vrindavan pastimes. So Rupa Goswami, he would write on palm leaf and uh, he had a very beautiful uh, handwriting and was appreciated even by uh, Lord Chaitanya. And what, what did uh, he, he write? Had, what book did he write particularly? Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Yes, right. This book we're studying, right? Okay, and, and he was, where was he living? Vrindavan. Yes. And who was he with? With his brother, Sanatan Goswami. Right. And other four Goswamis. And who is Rupa Goswami in the spiritual world? Uh, Rupa Manjari. Rupa Manjari. Right. Rupa Manjari. Right. Good. Okay. And who knows the meaning of the title? Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. What does it mean? Bhakti means? Devotion. And Devotional service. Ras, um, rasa Amrita means? Uh, rasa means your mellow. Uh -huh. And Amrita means which is... Uh, which never ends. Which never ends. Right. And Sindhu is? Ocean. Ocean. Right. Okay. Good. Please explain Rasa as presented in the preface and as we discussed it in our class for lesson one. Please explain rasa. Anybody like to say something about rasa? Uh, the, it is the pleasure which is derived from any service, the, um, the attractive feature and uh, it, it is a relationship which is very sweet, the taste of which is very sweet. Oh, it is yeah. a mellow which is very sweet. Oh yeah, very good, very good points. Okay, very good. And what were Prabhupada's purpose in writing, Nectar of Devotion, and the relevance of these purposes to our movement and the world? Any, anybody? Yes, actually Prabhupada wanted to create more and more preachers who can spread the knowledge of uh, devotion service of Lord Chaitanya to the world. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah, that's a good reason. Anything else? Yes? Uh, Mr. Bhaktarasamir Sindhu, uh, anyone can understand who is the... Krishna, then we will love all living entities because all living entities are part and partial of Krishna. This is, the, this is one important verse about pure devotional service. And this is a verse you will have to remember. There's not many verses to be memorized in the nectar of devotion, but this is one. This is the definition of pure devotional service. Right? You can see. Anya bila shita shunyam. Jnana karmadya navritam. Anu ku yena krishna no shilanam bhaktir utama. Bhaktir utama means first class devotional service. The topmost, the best devotional service. So bhaktir utama, describing what is the best devotional service. So it's described here. Anya bilasita shunyam. That means that you have no material desire. All the material desires are shunyam, they're made zero. And jnana karmadiya navritam. Desire for speculative knowledge. Why do people want jnana? Because they're thinking about liberation. And why do people want karma? They want to enjoy the material world. But both these two desires, jnana and karma, they're destroyed. They're, 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 they're not cultivated. They're finished. Right? So jnana, karma, anavritam. They're uncovered. They're exposed. Let people know this is not right. 
Then Akuyena means favorable and Krishna no Krishna no means in relation to Krishna. So we'll go through each of these words because this is important. Alright, so this is the definition. When first class devotional service develops, one must be devoid of all material desires. Right? That's the first line. Anyabilasita sunyam, devoid of all material desires. And knowledge obtained by monistic philosophy, jnana, and fruitive activities, karmadi. That, so we have to be devoid. That means there, there should not be any material desire, there should not be any material, there shouldn't be a desire for knowledge, and we shouldn't have fruitive activities knowledge obtained in monistic philosophy. Monistic philosophy is, means that like Mayavadi philosophy. So we should not have that kind of knowledge and we shouldn't desire also to enjoy the results of our work, fruit of action. The devotee must constantly serve Krishna favorably as Krishna desires. That's the important point, to serve Krishna favorably as Krishna desires. And this is another verse which is also a, like a definition also of pure devotion. I think these are the two main verses in this course, Nectar of Devotion. Okay, sarvopadi venir muktam tat parat vena nirmalam rishi kena rishi kesha sevanam bhaktir uchate. All right, sarvopadi upadi. There's a word upadi. Upadi means designations. So sarvopadi means all designations. And vinir muktam means get free. You have to give up all the designations. Tat parat vena nirmalam means the only purpose should be to serve Krishna. And it must be, it must be Commit, we must be continuous and committed to this. Then Rishikena meaning the senses and Rishikesha means that's Krishna. Krishna is Rishikesh. So Rishikena, Rishikesha. We should use our senses for the service of Krishna. Our senses are Rishikena and Rishikesha is Krishna. He's the mas master of the senses. So our senses should be used for him. Sevanam bhakti uchate. Right? So sevanam means the service. This is devotional service. So this is also like a definition of bhakti. But the best one is the first one. Anyway, we'll read here. Bhakti. Our devotional service means engaging all our senses in the service of the Lord, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Master of all the senses. When the spirit soul renders service unto the Supreme, there are two side effects. One is freed from all material designations and one's senses are purified simply by being employed in the service of Krishna. So we'll look at this again. Okay. Now this is not very important for us. We're studying the nectar of devotion. 
some things here in this PowerPoint presentation are not so important. You know, like this verse, this is an important one, and this one, this is an important one. I'll tell you the things which are important. This is not very important. Mangala Charanam, making us... Mangala Charanam means at the beginning of the book, when they write a book, they have to begin with the Mangala Charanam. They have to offer prayers. Just like before we give class, we offer some prayers. Today I was saying Om Magyana, like that. So here Rupa Goswami, he's, he also gave a Mangala Charanam. And it mentioned here what, what is involved. The invocation. Invocation means that the beginning of the book involves three processes. Defining the objective, offering benedictions, and offering obeisances. So three purposes. Just like Ishopanishad, the invocation mantra, Om Purnamada Purnamidam, like, or in Srimad Bhagavatam, you have three verses in the Srimad Bhagavatam. The first three verses are the invocation. Like that. So if you look at the three verses, then the three purposes are described. The objective is defined. In other words, what you want to do, what, what your goal is. And you get benedictions, like by reading this book, you get free of all material desires. By reading this book, you'll become peaceful and happy. By reading this book, you'll get transcendence and offering obeisances, right? Offering respect. Okay, so here is the invocation for, or, or this is the Mangala Charanam, invoking auspiciousness. Mangala Charanam means invoking auspiciousness. And in this Mangala Charanam, in this first prayer, he's going to define the objective. What do we want to do, we want to achieve? So he, he describes here, you can see, Lord Sri Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the cause of all causes, the reservoir of all rasas or relationships. So this is how Rupa Goswami begins the nectar of devotion. He's talking about Lord Krishna and he said, Lord Krishna is the cause of all causes and he's the reservoir of all rasas or relationships. So we'll hear more about this. Shown here. Right? This, this is Vastu Nirkesha, defining the objective. So Lord Krishna, we said he is the reservoir of all rasas. So that's described as Akila Rasamrita Murti. The form of Krishna is Murti, right? He has a form. And he is Akila Rasamrita. All perpetually re re relished rasas or relationships are within Krishna. And which Krishna is mentioned? We're talking about Vrindavan Krishna. Krishna in Vrindavan. Right? Krishna is perfect in Mathura. He is more perfect in Dwarka, and he is most perfect in Vrindavan. In Dwarka and Mathura, the devotees there are more servants. The mood is to be the servant of Krishna. But in Vrindavan, Krishna enjoys with the devotees there. Krishna enjoys with them. They all love Krishna more than they love Krishna in Dwarka. In Vrindavan, they have the highest love for Krishna. 
the gopis love Krishna, and the cowherd boys love Krishna, and the go Mother Yashoda, Nanda Maharaj, they love Krishna. So everyone loves Krishna in Vrindavan. Krishna in Vrindavan is very, very sweet. But Krishna in Dwarka is more opulent. So just like if you go to the countryside, you'll find in the countryside it's more relaxed. When you're in the city, there's always tension and pressure. But in the countryside, people are more relaxed. So Krishna in Vrindavan, he enjoys himself the best in Vrindavan. And his relationships with everyone is very sweet. But in Dwarka, Krishna is the king. And so when he's the king, then he sits above everyone and people come and bow to him and like that. So it's a different relationship, different mood. In Vrindavan, everyone is friends. But in Dwarka, not quite the same. All right, Madhiji, can you keep reading for us? Krishna Maharaj, yes, Maharaj. Akhila Rasamrita Murtihi. So we can enjoy Krishna's loving service in so many ways, not only by the embrace of the gopis, but in the fight of Bhishma with Krishna and piercing his body with arrows. Therefore, Krishna is Akhila Rasamrita. There are 12 rasas, either primary rasa or secondary rasa. Any rasa, Krishna is ready to respond to any rasa you want to deal with Krishna. That is Krishna's position. Nectar of Devotion Lecture, Vrindavan, October 26, 1972. Right? So do you remember what are the... the there are five primary rasas and then seven secondary rasas. Do you know what the five primary rasas are, Surashan Prabhu? What are the five primary rasas? Shashikan, do you know? Yes, Maharaj, I can try one. Uh, there are Santaras, Dasaras, Sakharas, Vatsalaras and Madhuridas. Right, yes. Can you give the English? Santa means uh, uh, neutral. Yes. Santa. And then Dasa means servitorship. And then uh, Sakha means friendship. And then Vatsala means parenthood, and then Madhuri means, uh, means uh, conjugal lover. Yes, very good, right. So five primary, then there are seven secondaries. At least we should know the five primary rasas. That's important, the relationships. We all have some rasa with Krishna, but we've forgotten. So. The gopis, of course, they are in conjugal love with Krishna. And when Krishna is fighting with Bhima, or Bhishma, Krishna fought with Grandfather, well, Grandfather Bhishma was fighting with Arjuna in the battle of Kurukshetra. But when they were fighting, it was like a loving exchange, just like sometimes lovers also fight with each other. So Krishna, uh, uh, Arjuna and Grandfather Bhishma, Grandfather Bhishma, he was fire, fighting and firing arrows even at Krishna, but with love. <laughs> it's hard to understand that, that the embrace of the gopis, the gopis would embrace and Bhishma would fight with Krishna and he would pierce his body with arrows, but there's no difference. It was the same mood, just as the gopis embraced Krishna, Grandfather Bhishma would fire his arrows into Krishna. The same mood, with love. <laughs> so this is the loving exchange between Krishna and his devotees. 
very difficult to understand. We would think Bhishma is the enemy, he's fighting against Krishna and he's firing arrows into Krishna's body. But they're like, it's like throwing flowers at someone. It's a loving exchange. Okay? All right, Maharaji, can you keep reading now? Yes, Maharaj. Mangala Charanam, invoking auspiciousness, Namaskara, offering obeisances. Hridi Esya Preranaya, Pravarti Toham, Varaka Rupo Api, Tasya Hare Padakamalam Vande Chaitanya Devasya. Although I am the lowest of men and have no knowledge, the inspiration to write transcendental literatures about devotional service has been mercifully bestowed upon me. Therefore, I am offering my obeisances at the lotus, lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, who has given me the chance to write these books. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita, Antya Leela, 1.212, Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, 1.1.2. All right, so who's writing this? Who's seeing this? Rupa Goswami. Goswami. Yes, right. Rupa Goswami, right. Rupa Goswami wrote this verse. Yeah, it's in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. And so this verse is also in the Chaitanya Charitamrita, but it was written originally by Rupa Goswami. Hmm? So sometimes Krishna does Kaviraj, when he's writing Chaitanya Charitamrita, he'll take slokas from other scriptures. So he took this sloka from the uh, writings of Jiva Gos uh, Rupa Goswami from the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. All right, keep reading, Maharaj. Yes, yes, Maharaj. Let me offer my respectful obeisances unto the lotus feet of Srila Rupa Goswami Prabhupada and of Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Goswami Prabhupada, by whose inspiration I have been engaged in the matter of compiling the summary study of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Nectar of Devotion, Introduction, Second Paragraph. All right. So, I have been engaged in the matter of compiling this summary study of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Who is writing this? Srila Prabhupada. Right, yes. Srila Prabhupada. So he, you see, he offers his obeisances. He offers obeisances to Rupa Goswami and he offers obeisances to his own guru. So if you're going to write a book, if any of you are going to write a book, first thing you have to do is write an invocation. Then you offer your obeisances and like that and describe the purpose. Yes. Here's another, another verse. Mataji, read. Srila Rupa, yeah, Srila Rupa Goswami begins his great book by offering his respectful obeisances unto Srila, unto Sri Sanatana Goswami, who is his elder brother and spiritual master. And he prays that Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu may be very pleasing to him. Yeah. Nectar Devotion, Introduction, third paragraph. So, again, Srila Prabhupada, written. The Rupa, he's describing Rupa Goswami offered his obeisances to Sanatan Goswami, the older brother and spiritual master. So the same way Prabhupada offering his obeisances. Yes? Let us offer our respectful obeisances to all the great devotees and acharyas holy teachers who are compared to sharks in the great ocean of nectar and who do not care for the various rivers of liberation. So of devotion, introduction, fourth paragraph. this is a nice example here. The nice, this is a nice example. Who are the sharks in the ocean? Who are compared to the sharks in the ocean? The Acharyas. Yeah, yeah. why? Why are they compared to sharks? Because they are fearless and they do not care for uh, for anything. Yes. Yes, some more. What, what, why are the acharyas compared to sharks? 
Because sharks are biggest and fish in the ocean, Maharaj. Okay. Did the sharks ever go in the river? No, no, no. No? You never see any sharks in the river, eh? Yes, Maharaj. <laughs> we don't get any sharks in the Ganga. Yeah. But we, we, get, we get crocodiles. You can get crocodiles. Mm, yes, Maharaj. But not sharks, right? Yes, Maharaj. The sharks, they're in the great ocean. And they don't go deep in the ocean. And they don't care. The rivers, the rivers are compared to? Other parts of, uh, uh, other parts like Karmakanda, Gyan Kanda, obviously. The rivers are... The, yes, the rivers are compared to people who want liberation. They want to get mukti or moksha or liberation. They want to merge with the oneness, right? So devote the acharyas, they never go in these rivers of liberation. The sharks always stay in the ocean. Okay? Right? Go ahead. We're still on the mandalacharanam. We're still offering, oh, we offered obeisances. Now we're offering benedictions going to get benedictions. Yes? Ashirvada offering benedictions. Srila Rupa Goswami prays to his spiritual master, Srila Sanatana Goswami, for the protection of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the ocean of, of the pure nectar of devotional service. From the augmentative logicians who unnecessarily meddle in the science of service to the Lord, he compares their arguments and logic to volcanic eruptions in the midst of the ocean. In the midst of the ocean, volcanic eruptions can do very little harm. And similarly, those who are against devotional service to the Lord and who put forward many philosophical theses about the ultimate transcendental realization cannot disturb this great ocean of devotional service. Mm -hmm. Okay. So here, another example, we hear about volcanoes in the ocean, all right? So, who, wh wh who, what is the analogy? Who are, who are like volcanoes? What is being described? Like volcanoes in the ocean? The arguments. Which arguments? Different... Uh... Acharyas. No, no, no. Uh, unnecessary logic and argument, Maharaj. Huh? Unnecessary logic and arguments. The yeah, unnecessary uh, logicians. Logicians. Logicians who unnecessarily meddle in the science of devotional service. So, p these people, they're not actually devotees. They're not actually devotees, but they, they want, somehow they get involved and they start talking about service to Krishna. But they're not actually devotees and they aren't, may talk about it. And they may argue about it. So their logic is compared to an, a volcanic eruption, right? And a volcanic eruption in, this, in the middle of the ocean. Is it going to make a big disturbance if there's a volcanic eruption in the middle of the ocean? No. No, it can't do very much harm. Of course, sometimes you do get things like you get tsunami. <laughs> you know, you get a tsunami, there's a, maybe a big earthquake in the bottom of the ocean somewhere, and that can cause a tsunami, and that's really a big problem. But here, they're just talking a volcanic eruption. The volcanic eruption in the middle of the ocean, it's not going to do any harm to anybody, you know. We're far away from the middle of the ocean, it's not going to be a big problem. So volcanic eruptions can do very little harm. And similarly, those who are against devotional service, and they're not devotees, they're against devotional service, and who put forward many philosophical Theses 
about the ultimate transcendental realization. They have their own speculations. They're just all speculation. They try to explain everything by their own mind. So these people, they cannot disturb the great ocean of devotional service. Right? There's a whole ocean of devotional service. Okay, here's another benediction. Yes, Maharaji? Yeah. Um, Bhakti rasasya prastutir akhila jagan mangala prasangasya agnenapi agnenapi mayasya kriyate supradam pramodaya. I have compiled this book on devotional service despite my ignorance in order to bring joy to my friends and well wishers and to distribute Krishna's auspicious association all over the world. Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1.1.6. Oh, okay. So, why the book was compiled, the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu? Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, this means, who wrote this verse? Sri Rupa Goswami. Yes, right. Rupa Goswami is talking. He said, I compiled this book. Uh, despite my ignorance, to bring joy to my friends and well-wishers and to distribute Krishna's auspicious association all over the world. Now at that time, Rupa Goswami was living in Vrindavan and he was writing on the palm leaves, but he's writing about distributing all over the world. <laughs> Very interesting. Yes, there's some more here. The but, author of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, Srila Rupa Goswami, very humbly submits that he is just trying to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world, although he humbly thinks himself unfit for this work. That should be the attitude of all preachers of the Krishna consciousness movement, following in the footsteps of Srila Rupa Goswami. We should never think of ourselves as great preachers, but should all to the previous acharyas and simply by following in their footsteps, we may be able to do something for the benefit of suffering humanity. Nectar of Devotion, Introduction, Sixth Paragraph. Okay. So, offering benedictions, Rupa Goswami is saying that He's very humble. He said, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm just trying to spread Krishna consciousness all over the world. Although, he doesn't think himself to be very qualified. He thinks of himself unfit. He's not very, he feels, I'm not very qualified. Of course, at that time, he's just living in Vrindavan, 500 years ago. There was no communication, really, with the rest of the world. But still, he was thinking about distributing the message of Krishna consciousness. So, Srila Prabhupada tells us, Srila Prabhupada writes, we should never think of ourselves as great preachers, but should always consider that we are simply instrument to the previous acharya and simply follow in their footsteps, then we might be able to do something. All right, Sitala, you understand this? Sitala? Yes, my are you a great, are you a great preacher? No. Yes, right. I'm not. Yeah, be humble, that's good. Sitala Mataji makes a lot of devotees. She preaches a lot, makes a lot of, but she's humble. She said, no, I'm not good. So, continue. Is this mission impossible? Ma Maharaj? Yeah. Yes, Maharaj. Kathanchana smriti yasmin dushkaram dushkaram sukaram bhavet vispriti viparitam syat shri chaitanyam namami tam Things that are very difficult to do become easy to execute if one somehow or other simply remembers Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. If one does not remember him, even easy things become very difficult. 
To this, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, I offer my respectful obeisances. Chaitanya Charitamrita Adi Lila 14.4. Jai. Srila Rupa Goswami Ki Jai. So this is a verse from the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Every, it becomes very easy if somehow or other we remember Lord Chaitanya. But if we don't remember, then it will be very difficult, very difficult. So we should remember, always remember Lord Chaitanya. Before we worship Radha and Krishna, we worship Lord Chaitanya. All right? So the, now we're going to have an, the over. This is that's the end of the invocation. Rem, remember the invocation. We spoke about the objective, and then we described also offering obeisances, and then we give a benedictions. Benedictions. So now we're going to see the overview of the book, the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. Right? Who's in this picture? Yeah. Sitala, who's in this picture? Uh, Rupa and Sanatana Goswami. Right, yes. So originally in Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, the ocean is divided like the watery ocean into east, south, west and north. Right? The Nectar of Devotion, Introduction, fifth paragraph. So, you can see four, east, south, west and north, right? So, four sections in the Nectar of Devotion. This east section, this is what we're studying. We are going to only study the one section. We only do this once. In the Bhakti Shastri, we only do this first section. The East section is called Purva Vibhaga or Bhagavad Bhakti Veda, meaning varieties of devotional service. And we will study the introduction and we'll go up to chapter 19. We won't do these other sections. You can see other sec 20 to 34, 35 to 44, then 45 to 51. We're only doing this one section, for the first 19 chapters. Not very difficult, right? We're going to hear about the varieties of devotional service. In the south, it talks about rasa and the, the current symptoms, the general symptoms of transcendental mellows, right? And then over here, we have the uh, primary loving relationships. And then on top, the, the indirect loving relationships. So we're just doing this first section, the East section, Purva Vibhaga. Right? Who would like to read now? Who didn't read yet? Shashi Kant. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Overview of Purva Vibhaga. In the first part, there are four waves. First being a general description of the devotional service. The second concerns the regulative principle for execution of devotional service. And the third wave, devotional service in ecstasy. And the fourth is the ultimate goal, love of God. God. Okay. Lecture of devotion, introduction, seventh paragraph. Okay. So the, we're talking about the east section, the east section of the ocean. And in the east section, there are waves, just like when you go to the sea, you go to Jagannath Puri, there's big waves, there's waves coming. So here, in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, there are waves, 
and we're going to talk about four, four waves, right? The first one is the description of devotional service. And then the second is about the regulative principles for devotional service. Then the third section will be about devotional service in ecstasy. And the fourth is love of God. Right? So these, the third and fourth are not very much. Here you can see the overview of Purva Vibhaga. Purva Vibhaga meaning the eastern section of the ocean. So you can see Bhagavad Bhakti Beda, varieties of devotional service. So we have the general, the general description, then the practice, and then the ecstasy, and then the pure love of God. All right? General, yes? This lahari, this means waves. This means waves. Lahari means waves. So four waves. The general description, and then the, the practice, then the ecstasy, and the pure love of God. Right? Who is it, pure love of God? Are you a pure love of God, little avatar? Really? Do you have ecstasy? No. No? You're not in ecstasy? Maybe sometime in service. Really? No, oh, good. No. I don't know. Oh, okay. And then practice, right? We have to do practice. By doing practice, then you'll get ecstasy. And from ecstasy, you'll get love of God. Okay? So we finished half of the lesson. We finished half of this lesson too. So we'll review, revision. We talked about the Mangala Charanam. And we said Mangala Charanam, there was three things. Invoking auspiciousness. Well, Mangala Charana means invoking auspiciousness, right? That's the meaning, Mangala Charana, means to invoke auspiciousness. So there was the invocation. The invocation had three parts, the objective, and then, the, then also obeisances, and then benediction. And then the overview of Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu. So the overview, right? We said four waves, four with general characteristics, practice, ecstasy, and love of God. All right, so that's it. That's what we covered for the first hour. We're going to go ahead, and the, the next part is important part. We're going to talk about the definition of pure devotional service. That's important. We want to learn this, about the definition of pure devotional service. Right? If we ask you, what is the definition of pure devotional service? So we should learn today. You should know after the class today, you should know what is actually pure devotional service. All right, who would like to read for us now? Shashi, Shashi Kant, you're reading. All right. Definition of pure devotional service. Although Brahmaji was to hear Vedic instructions directly from the personality of Godhead in order to satisfy the inquisitiveness of all prospective students of the Vedas, Brahmaji, just like a scholar, studied the Vedas three times as generally done by all the scholars. He studied with great attention, concentrating on the purpose of Vedas, and after scrutinizingly examining the whole process, he ascertained that becoming a pure, pure, 
becoming a pure, unalloyed devotee of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Sri Krishna is the topmost perfection of all religious principles. And this is the last instruction of the Bhagavad Gita directly presented by Personality of Godhead. Mm-hmm. Second, first, second canto, second chapter, 34th verse per quote. All right. This is the last instruction of the Bhagavad Gita presented by the Personality of Godhead. What is the last instruction? So what, what does that mean? Mr. So Lord, uh, Lord is appealing everyone to give up all kind of different variety of religious principle and exclude, uh, surrender only unto him and he will remove all kinds of sinful actions and yeah, he will free us. So? What does, what's the point? What do we want to do? Why should we surrender? What, what did Prabhupada say here? To become a pure devotee. Right, you have to become a pure devotee. Right, become a pure, unalloyed devotee. So that is the, the meaning of surrender. This is the topmost perfection of all religious principles, to become a pure devotee. Right? So we want to be, we want to know what, how to recognize the pure devotee. We will learn today, right? So here's the verse again. Anya bilasita shunyam, jnana karma jnana vritam, anu kuyena krishna no shilanam bhakti utama. Definition, right? Who like? Uh, Shall she keep reading? Definition of pure devotional service. When first class devotional service develops, one must be devoid of all material desires, knowledge obtained by monistic philosophy, and fruitive action. The devotee must constantly devotee must constantly serve Krishna favorably as Krishna desires. Bhakti Sarasindo 1.1.11 Chaitanya Chaitamita Madhalila 19.167. All right, thank you. So, again, this is the definition pure devotional set. We're going to look at each of these items. Now, we've divided it into two categories. The definition is in two, two kinds of. Uh, uh, two characteristics, right? We have the well, first one is called Swarupa Lakshana, and then the second part is Tatasta Lakshana. Or in English, Swarupa Lakshana, we say the principal statement or the essential characteristics. And Tatasta Lakshana means further qualities are marginal characteristics. So two different, there's, because there are different items in the definition, so some of the parts are essential and some of them are marginal. We'll look at this. So we're going to look here, you can see which ones are Swarupa. The Swarupa Lakshana, essential characteristics. What is essential? We say Anu Kuyena Krishna and Anu Shilanam. Right? We say this is essential. And the Tatasta, Tatasta mean, mean marginal, further, not so, not quite so important. That's the Anya Bila Sita Shunyam. And jnana karma jnana vritam. Right? Now we have to look at these more closely because you don't know the meaning of all of these things. So, Swarupa Lakshana. Right? Shashi, read. Yes, Maharaj. <coughs> Swarupa Lakshana. Krishna. We should understand Krishna to mean Krishna and his personal expansions. So Krishna includes all such expansions. 
as well as his pure devotees. Krishna does not just Krishna alone. He is always with his associates and paraphernalia. The next star of devotion, introduction, 13th and 15th, 15th paragraphs. All right. So, what is Prabhupada saying here? Krishna, we understand when we talk about Krishna, we don't just mean only Krishna, but we include everything, everyone who comes with Krishna. Right? Who does Krishna bring with him when he comes? His flute. Okay, Krishna will bring his flute with him. If he's a cowherd boy, if he's a cowherd boy from Vrindavan, he'll have his flute. If he's not in Vrindavan, if he's coming from Dwarka, he won't have a flute. But if he's in Vrindavan, he'll have his flute. If he's a cowherd. In general, we can say that he's paraphernalia. Huh? In general, we can say he's paraphernalia. Yeah, but I want to know what his paraphernalia is. His dham, is it, his devotees. Huh? His, his dham, his devotees. Okay, uh, who are who are these devotees? Srimati uh, Radharani. Yeah, Srimati Radharani, right. Yeah, Krishna is coming. And Vrindavan, Vrindavan pastime, Srimati Radharani is going to be there. Right? We don't just put Krishna on the altar on his own. We don't just worship Krishna alone. Krishna has got to be with somebody, right? Yes. Krishna is going to have his pleasure potency there, Srimati Radharani. Even you go to Dwarka, Krishna has got his wife there. If you go to the temple in Dwarka, you see Krishna there and then he's got also, who are Krishna's wives in Dwarka? Do you know? Rukmini. Rukmini. And who else? There are many. <laughs> Satyabhama. Satyabhama, right. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there are eight principal queens there in Dwarka. But especially Satyabhama and Rukmini, they're the two main ones. So they're with Krishna and we see Krishna with Radharani and Vrindavan. And if Radharani is not there, who will be with Krishna? Chandrauli. Balaram, yeah, Krishna Balaram, just like our temple in Vrindavan, it's Krishna Balaram temple, right? If Balaram is there, Radharani won't come. And if Radharani is there, Balaram won't come. Either one, you can't have Krishna and Balaram and Radharani, not together. No, Krishna and Balaram. Huh? Hi, Krishna Maharaj. May I ask one question? And yeah. Uh, just uh, you say that uh, if Balaram is there, so Radharani won't be there. So we can watch Jagannath Shubhaja and uh, uh, Radha Krishna together in uh, our altar. Well, we don't put them together in the temple. Radha and, Radha, and, Radha and Krishna and Jagannath Baladev Subhadra, they should have their own altar. Oh. Yes. Just like, just like Gornitai. Now Gornitai is also Krishna Balaram. So you don't put Radha and Krishna and Gornitai on the same altar either. Usually, if you go to the Gaudiamat temple, if you go down to the road to Chaitanya Mat, you'll see they have the, the Gandharvika Giridhari and they have Lord Chaitanya. They put Lord Chaitanya, they don't put Lord Nityananda because Lord Nityananda is Balaram and Balaram doesn't come where there's Radharani because it's a different mood. So Krishna comes, he, it, but we say Krishna comes, it includes all of his expansions and his pure devotees. So Krishna does not mean only Krishna alone, but he comes with all of his associates 
and the paraphernalia. So we, this is Swarupa, this is essential characteristic. Right? Right? So Krishnanu, then Shilanam, Anu Shilanam. Anu Shilanam. Anu means following or constantly. And Shilanam means cultivation or activity. So Anu Shilanam means constantly doing activities for the pleasure of Krishna. Constantly, always engaged in the service of Krishna. That is pure devotional service. Right? We do devotional service. Devotional service, do you remember from Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto? First canto, second chapter, devotional service is described. That it, that it is... Uh, Pure devotional service is re rendered constantly, without motivation. Savai Pumsam. Right. Ahaitaki apratiyata. Yayatma supersedati. Ahaitaki means without material motivation. And ahaitaki apratiyata, uninterrupted. So it has to be continuous. We write about, we say, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. No days off. Sitala, no days off. Right? <laughs> Every day you have to chant. Every day you have to chant. Every day, Every day you have to get up for Mangal Arti. <laughs> Every day. You have to be a devotee. Every day you have to cook for Krishna and offer food to Krishna. That is Anushilanam, always serving Krishna. Okay, Shashi Prabhu, read. Yes, Manaj. Swarupalakshan, Anushilanam. The particular word used by Sri Goswami in this connection is Anushilanam, or cultivation by following the predecessors acharyas as soon as we say cultivation we must refer to activity without activity consciousness alone cannot help us the nectar of devotion introduction ninth paragraph mm -hmm. oh i am always serving krishna laying here in my bed i'm ser i'm thinking <laughs> of krishna no we have to do activity we have to get up we have to do the service. We cannot say, oh, I'm, I'm always thinking of Krishna sitting here in my armchair doing nothing. No, we have to do activities. What service? Well, well generally, this is a problem in Indi with Indians. <laughs> yes. Actually, <laughs> Maharaj, actually yeah. Maharaj, when we tell people to chant, a lot of people say, we always chant in our mind. Why do we need beads? <laughs> yeah, I know. When they tell me that I chant in my sleep. Yes. Every night I sleep, I chant my 16 rounds. Yes. Rascal. All right. Keep reading, Sh Shashi Prabhu. Yes, my Sarup Lakshana, Anu Shilanam. The word Anu suggests that one should engage himself in service of the Lord without any interval. He must be engaged in the service 100% and always. There must not be any interruption in such progress of devotional service. Bhakti Rasami Sindhu, BTG Volume 3, May 20, 1960. Right, Prabhupada said, there must not be any interruption in such progress of devotional service. So you have to keep doing service. It have to, has to be regular, has to go on all the time. Okay? Alright, you can see here, Anushilanam, meaning devotional activities. So there are two kinds of activities. One is positive and one is negative. Positive means pravriti, 
and negative means nivriti. Positive means the things we should do. Right? What should we do? We should chant 16 rounds. We should go to Mongol Arti. We should study nectar of devotion, Bhakti Shastri. Negative. What things should we not do? No intoxication, no gambling, no illicit sex, right? These things, this is nivriti, things you don't do. So there are things, you, the things to be done with the body, mind and words. What do we do with the body? With the body, we offer obeisances. What about with the mind? We think of Krishna and with the words, we chant Hare Krishna. This is all positive. And then there's negative things with the body, mind and words. We don't speak nonsense, right? No nonsense talk. And in the mind, we don't think about nonsense also. We don't think about sense gratification and maya. And with the body, we don't use the body for gross sense gratification. Okay, so the, understand the difference, positive and negative, what we do and what we don't do? Yes, Maharaj. This is devotional yes. activity. Is it clear, little avatar Mariji? Yes. You can understand, okay, good. Yes. What about, where's Maylin today, is she there? Yes, Guru Maharaj, I'm here. Oh, I'm, I'm not hearing your voice. I, I forgot about you. You're, you're not on my screen here. I'm not seeing your pretty face. Where are you? I'm always out of here. <laughs> okay. So, are you going to read for us? Melin, can you read for us? Ah, uh, yes. If he is not uh, continuously engaged in the cultivation of devotional service, it can't be called Uttama Bhakti. It's not pure devotional service. Someone might come into the temple and the deity might inspire him and he might put some money in the boat just to please the deity. Okay. Do you do that sometimes? You go into the temple, they see the deity, put some money in the box. Does it mean you're a pure devotee? Yes. Huh? Does it? Uh, Maylin, are you a pure devotee just because you put some money in the box? No, no. No, I'm not a pure devotee, no. Now keep reading. Yes. Um, all he might want to see in some budget just to please the deity and then he goes out and does everything else. So that's not pure devotional service. It has to be a systematic cultivation. Yes, right. has to be systematic cultivation. It, he said, he goes out and does everything else. What does that mean? What's he doing? Are not devotional activities. Yes, right. Doing all nonsense, right? But he comes into the temple, he puts some money in the box, or he may even sing a nice bhajan. He sings a nice bhajan, and then he goes out and he does everything else. Smoke a BD, smoke cigarette, maybe, maybe even drink some tea, coffee, or go to the bar. So that is not pure devotional service. It has to be systematic cultivation. All right, so that's it. Anu Shila Nam has to be continuous, has to be... Hare Krishna Maharaj. Yes. Maharaj, this uh, uh, cultivation, systematic cultivation, what it refers to? It is just following do's and don'ts or something more? Systematic cultivation means you practice the devotional service according to the rules and regulations. Yeah, okay. we, we have a process, right? We have a process. You, you have to come 
you have to go to temple and you meet devotees, you ado shraddha, to get a, a little faith and then association, and then you begin to practice, and then you after begin practicing, then you get initiation, like that. So there's a it's systematic, step by step. Yes, Mother. All right. So yes, ano kuyena, ano kuyena means something. These activities which are favorable. So it's mentioned here, pleasing to Krishna. If what we're doing is, if it's anukulyena, it will be pleasing to Krishna. Right? So if I smoke cigarettes, is it pleasing to Krishna? Melin? Melin? Yes. If I smoke cigarettes, is it pleasing to Krishna? Uh. Will Krishna be pleased if I smoke a cigarette? Yes. Really? No, she I don't think that's the word. Huh? Yes. Yeah. If I smoke oh, yeah. do you smoke cigarettes, Melin? Oh, no, no, I'm not. Sorry, Guru Maharaj, I didn't catch your word. No smoking, no. <laughs> <laughs> you, you could not hear what I'm saying. <laughs> I thought maybe you were smoking cigarettes. I don't know. No, no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. Okay. So it should be pleasing to Krishna and it should be performed with the intention to please Krishna. Now that's also another thing. But when we do it, we want to please Krishna. Just like when we chant Hare Krishna. When we do the japa, we should do it because we want to please Krishna. We don't just do it because my guru told me I had to do it. We have to want to please Krishna. Now, we're go in a little while, we're going to give you examples and you have to tell us if this is pure devotional service or not. All right? But we haven't finished yet. This is only anukulyena, how to please Krishna, pleasing to Krishna and you want to please Krishna. That's very important. So how to know if Krishna is pleased? Oh, how do we know if Krishna is pleased? So we've stated a verse here. Sadhu Shastra Guru Vakya Chite Te Kariya Aikya. We should always keep within our heart the instruction of sadhu. What does sadhu mean? Do you know, Lila Avatar? What's a sadhu? Sadhu means Goswami. Yeah, like that, a, a renounced person, somebody who's like renounced from material life, a holy person. Saintly person. And what is Shastra? Do you know Shastra? Um, the scriptures. Scriptures, right. And Guru. So all these three things, right? We must always keep within our heart instructions of Sadhu, Shastra and Guru. This is the process. So if we do that, then you're pleasing Krishna. Now we don't know how to please, you may not know if Krishna is pleased, but you know if your guru is pleased, and you know if the sadhus are pleased, and you have to know also what's in the scriptures. Are you following scripture? Are you following the Shastra? All right, how to know if Krishna is pleased? Just like the master is there not for his enjoyment. There are so many servants. They are engaged in his service. That is our position. Mami Vamsa Jiva Lok, Jiva Bhuta. Mami Vamsa Jiva Bhuta. 
You take it so many ways. Our position is to serve Krishna and by his pleasure we shall be pleased. So our position is to serve Krishna. If we are pleasing Krishna, then we will be pleased. Just like if you, if you smoke cigarettes, you know you are not pleasing Krishna, so you won't feel very happy, you won't be pleased. So you don't smoke. Alright? So here you can see the different items. Anu Kuyena, Krishna and Anu Shilanam. Anu Kuyena, Krishna should get pleasure from it. And devotees' attitude towards Krishna should be favourable. In other words, we, we want to please Krishna. And then we said Krishna means Krishna and his expansions and Krishna's paraphernalia and his abode and Krishna's pure devotees. All of all the primary characteristics, this one is the most essential, right? Very important. So Anushilanam, constant activity, following the predecessor Acharya. So th that's the Swarupa. And then the Tatasta. Tatasta means marginal, not so important, but still there is in pure devotional service. So Anya Bilasita Shunyam. Anya meaning other. Abila, desire, ta, motive, shunyam, zero. So anya bilasita shunyam means devoid, free, without any material desires. So when we do devotional service, we should not have any material desires. That's the point. Tatasta lakshana. Jnana karma janavritam and then jnana karma adi meaning all these things just like if you do astrology and mystic yoga or artificial detachment renunciation this is not part of this is not good so not covered we don't do these things. These things are all not in pure devotional service. No impersonal philosophy and no fruitive activity. You don't do it to get the good results. All right. Shashi Prabhu, read. Yes, Maharaj. Tatastra Lakshana. Anavritam. Uncovered by mental speculation or fruitive activities. Karma Kanda Jnana Karma Kanda Jnana Karma Dhyana Not covered. If you mix up Karma you, If you mix up Karma with Bhakti If you mix up Jnana with Bhakti or if you mix up Yoga it is contaminated. It is not pure. Pure devotional service is given by Prabhu Swami. Yes. Keep reading. Anya Vilasta Sunyam. No desires for fruitive activities or philosophical speculation or yogic mystic yogic magic. No. Simply how to satisfy Krishna. That is Bhakti. Anukulena means what is favorable. What Krishna desires. That is first class Bhakti. Srimad Bhagavatam 1.2.18. Yes. Tatastra Lakshan. Do the unwanted desires that linger in the heart disqualify devotees from practicing pure devotion service, pure devotion? By my previous sinful life, my heart is polluted with many illusory attachments. Personally, I have no power to stop them. Only Lord Krishna within my heart can remove such inauspicious contamination. But whether the Lord removes such attachments immediately or lets me let me go on being afflicted by them 
I will never give up my devotional service to him. Even if the Lord places billions of obstacles in my path, and even if because of my offenses, I go to hell, I will never for a moment stop serving Lord Krishna. I'm not interested in mental speculation and fruitive activities. Even if Lord Brahma personally comes before me offering such engagements, I will not be even slightly interested. Although I am attached to material things, I can see very clearly that they lead to no good because they simply give me trouble and disturb my devotional service to the Lord. Therefore, I sincerely repent my foolish attachments to so many material things, and I am patiently awaiting Lord Krishna's mercy. Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's commentary on Srimad Bhagavatam, 11th chapter, 20th chapter. Uh, 11th canto, 20th chapter, 27th and 28th verse. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. One devotee in Bombay asked that if a devotee sees a man drowning, should he save him? Because a devotee is supposed to engage in unalloyed devotional service. He is not support, supposed to mix other activities. So, where does saving a drowning man comes on the list of devotional service? Prabhupada replied that in principle he should not save him because actually we have no business interfering with the people's acts and reactions. Then Prabhupada said, that was the there's another consideration called loka vichya or public sentiment. A devotee may do something which is not strictly included in the category of devotional service out of consideration for the public sentiment so that the people don't become hostile to the devotees and thus make it harder for the devotees to preach. But if we think that if I do not do some material pious activities, then I cannot achieve bhakti or some bad will come to me, that is against the principle of your devotional service. Okay. So if somebody's drowning in the Ganga, right? Are you a good swimmer, Sitala? You know swimming? Oh, no. no, no, no. Okay. I so if, if you go to Ganga and you drown in the Ganga, so are we going to let you drown or should we save you? We should save you? Huh. Well, you go? only if you're a devotee, right? If you're a devotee, we can save you. If you're not a devotee, should we save you? Mm. No. Yes. Huh? Little avatar. Somebody's drowning in the Ganga and they're not a devotee. Should we save them or not? Yes, we should save them, I think. Why? They're not devotees. Everyone, every living being is part and part of the Lord. But he's a karmi. He does a lot of sinful things. We could say it's his karma to drown. Just let him drown. No. Why not? Everyone is in his own process of advanced, his own process to the Lord, actually. Well, we don't care what they're doing. What do you say, Sudarshan Prabhu? Yes, Hare Krishna Mahārāj. We should, we should save that person, even though he is not a, a devotee, because otherwise if you don't save, then the people around will think bad of us uh, devotees and will not listen to us when we preach them. Hmm. So we have to do some material benefit, material good, uh, in order to make people, uh, uh, teach, please people, so that they believe in us about, uh, about Krishna and God. Oh, okay, yeah. Well, one time in Australia, there was a fire in a big building. There was a fire in the building. 
And so the devotees were staying nearby. So the devotees came with a, a big sheet and they held the sheet out and they told the people, jump, jump in the sheet. And the old people jumped from the building into the sheet. So they, they saved many people. So it came in the newspaper, Hare Krishna devotees saved the lives of many people. Prabhupada said, oh, very good, very nice publicity. Yeah? We, we, we care about public opinion, that the people should think Hare Krishna people are good people. Not that we think, oh, he's a karmi, let him drown, I'm not going to save him, he's just a meat eater, karmi. <laughs> That's not very good, right? Maharaj, that is the reason why we distribute food in the COVID time. Yes, right. That's why we're distributing food in the mm. villages around Mayapur. Mm. But, Guru Maharaj, but I think that's, that should not be his reason. The reason should be we should have compassion to every living being, not only for uh, the, the newspaper will we report something good for us. What is compassion? You don't know what is compassion. Your compassion yes. is for the body. That is, yes. that is ignorance. Your yes. compassion is ignorance. You're just taking about the body. If you're really compassionate, then you should care about the soul. Krishna Consciousness, we want to give them Krishna Consciousness. So we don't just save people just because they're, because they're souls. But we have, to, we have to think about Krishna Consciousness, it has to be in relation to Krishna. So you save someone, and they, you save them, then they go off and eat meat. They go off and kill a cow, and eat cow's meat. And you save them. You get the karma, because you saved them, right? That is your compassion. You're, you're going to get the sinful reactions for all their sins. But if you save them for Krishna, because you're a devotee of Krishna, and you tell them, now I'm a devotee of Krishna, I saved you, now you have to surrender to Krishna. You were supposed to die, but I saved you. So now you should surrender to Krishna and you should chant Hare Krishna and stop all your sin. Right? Yes. Okay. Shashi Prabhu? Yes, Maharaj. Yes, Maharaj. Tatas Prakshana. In the words, the phrase Anya Avilasa, Anya Avilasa Sunya has not been used. In the words, the phrase Anya Vilasa Sunya has not been used. Instead, the phrase Anya Vilasita Sunyam has been chosen. This means devoid of other desires which are as deep rooted as one's nature. In death, in death threatening situations, a devotee may say, O oh Lord, please save me. Your devotee now from this danger, because it is a certain temporary desire, it is not harmful to his bhakti. That is because this desire arises beyond his control, opposite of his devotional nature. That desire is not his nature. Mm. All right. So, so some Maharaj, yes. Uh, Maharaj, uh, so in this case, uh, we can. Uh, I mean, so there was uh, once upon a time there was a forest fire in Vrindavan. When coward, they, Krishna went with the coward boys to with the cows, tending cows. So once the cows were caught in the fire, and all the gopas they were shouting. So what was that, Maharaj? What was that? Miss uh, here it is said. Well, they shouted to Krishna, right? They prayed to Krishna to save them. You can do that. If you're, if, if you're in danger, if your life is in danger, right? Yes, Maharaj. So somebody comes with a gun and you, you can pray to Krishna, save me. Okay, Is that pure devotional service? 
little avatar? Mm, I don't know. Uh, Sitala, is that pure devotional service? If we pray to Krishna, save me, somebody's coming with a gun. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. What, what do you say, Sudarshan? Is it pure devotional service? Yes, we surrender to Krishna. It's what? Surrender to Krishna. Everything we play to Krishna. Yeah, right. It's yeah. But if you, every day, if every day you're praying to Krishna, save me, save me, <laughs> then it's not pure it's devotion. Not it's a sort of sense gratification or yeah. self selfishness. If every day, every, 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 all the time you're praying to Krishna, save me, then that's not pure devotion. But sometimes, very special situation. Okay, Shashi? Yes, brother. Yes, brother. Super, superficial desires are desires for self-preservation. Do not exclude one from pure devotional service. But one's motive must be kept pure. Thus, pure devotional service can be executed in the stage of sadhana bhakti. Okay. Pure devotional service in the stage of sadhana bhakti. Sadhana bhakti means devotional service in practice. The motive must be pure. Mm. All right, then. All right. Maharaj, yes. That is, the, that is the reason why Prabhupada has given us all the rules, daily morning program, afternoon program, and all, right? For sadhana bhakti. Yes, right. Yes. Sadhana bhakti, morning program, evening program. Yes. So here you see. Pure devotional service. Swarupa Lakshana Anu Kuyena Krishna Anu Shilanam Tatasta Lakshana Ana Anya Bilasita Shunyam and Jnana Karma Jan Avritam. So here is the definition. You can see the words and the meaning. And then this is a second definition. <laughs> Oh, Krishna, very complicated, eh? Second definition of pure devotional service. So, Krishna is the proprietor of the senses, and we should not use anything of the Master without the permission of the Master. And therefore, the devotee takes permission from the Lord before engaging any of his senses. And the permission may come through the devotees, or through the scriptures, or through the spiritual master. But Srila Prabhupada said that a pure devotee does not engage any of the senses without first taking permission from the Lord. And once Srila Prabhupada told one disciple, you don't move this pen from this place on the table, to this place, on the table, without my permission. So that is bhakti. So Prabhupada said, don't even move the pen. Move. Very straight, right? Okay, open books, assessment, we're not going to talk. Okay, now we're going to do the group exercise. We want to give you the group exercise. This is important, right? The same group as yesterday. The three Chinese girls in one group, and the other two marriages in one group, and then you have, we have two men, right? You remember? Okay, so uh, how do I send it to you? What? Uh, we can take a, screen, a screenshot, Mara, a screenshot. Huh? We can take a screenshot of this page. Oh, you take a screenshot if I show it on the screen? Yeah. Okay, that's a good thing. Let me do that. Now let me find it. Let me close this. Okay. Let me see. Wait. Uh, I'll have to. I have to close a minute. Wait.
Recording in progress. Okay, now I'm going to show you, I'll, I'll, I'll just give you the link and you'll have to open it yourself on the internet. Okay. Now, you have to allow me to share the screen. Okay, okay, just a second. Okay. Okay, can, can you see this? Mm -hmm. Are you able to, you can see there's four, there's four things. There's one, two, three, four, A, B, C, D. You see okay. them? Uh -huh. So the people in group A, the three girls, you have to take, you have to get that first link. You have to open up that first link. Okay. And then the, the uh, next two ladies, they will take the group B. Okay. And then the two men, C, and then Sudarshan yourself and Shashikan, D. Okay. Can you, can you just copy this and share it on my WhatsApp? Uh, just from here, the, this thing. Share it on your yeah, what? Are the group work assignments.